All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday, and it's a busy one at that. A lot of large earthquake activity happening up around the globe right now. Uh, we've got uh, another six-pointer coming into this area. So it is 10.14 a.m. California time. April 22nd, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a, uh, looks like a large 6.6 .6 earthquake here around the Vanuatu region. The latest large quake in this area uh, earlier this morning, about 2 or 3 o'clock my time. We had a, a large earthquake around the Philippines area as well. This earthquake, 6.2, originally coming in as a 6.6. Looks like some further activity around Australia as well. Got, uh, man, got a lot filling in here across this area. Looks like something bigger uh, could potentially be on the horizon very soon. So the 6.6 .6 coming in, USGS not picking up on that earthquake yet. Uh, eventually they will, but it's filling in in this seismic gap zone right here where it's been somewhat absent of earthquake activity. But uh, man, let's take a look here at what we got. So earlier this morning started off with a 6.2 south of the Philippines there. Pretty decent earthquake. That's been a, a pretty good cluster of earthquake activity here recently. Uh, and then that was followed up by a 5.7, which is a decent size earthquake here around the Java Trench. Uh, and then another earthquake here, 5.7, completely, uh, well, somewhat on the same plate boundary here, but... Uh, opposite the 5.7 across the Java Trench. So this 5.7 around Papua New Guinea. And now a 6.6, 5.1. What is going on? That is some huge movement taking place out here uh, across the area. There's that 5.7. Looks like they, there's a lot of 5.7s out here. They just downgraded that 6.6 .6 to a 5.7. <laughs> what a downgrade is that the is that the downgrade number today i guess it's going to be because there's a lot of 5.7s that just seems a little odd <coughs> either way this is some decent uptick in earthquake activity happening around this region it's roughly about the uh taiwan area southward here into the philippines java trench all across this region here. I'm a little concerned for New Zealand now because of that activity here on the eastern coast of Australia. That's a 5.1 that just came in here. Uh, roughly about the same time as a 5.7 up north. Now, we'll have to see if that's actually a legit earthquake or not. Uh, there in eastern Australia, this 5.1 right here just outside of Sydney. Let's see, it looks like we do have some reports coming in and a legit earthquake is that. Yeah, so it looks like a, definitely a, a legit earthquake. That uh, is even more concerning there that we got that movement here north of Sydney, Australia. That is literally just uh, to the north there of Sydney, less than 50 miles. I don't recall the last time we've seen an earthquake of that size out there. Um, historical data does show a little bit of movement here. Uh, if we look at the time frame from 1900 to 2015, some earthquakes around 4.5 to 5.0. Uh, so it, it just doesn't happen all that often out there. So we got that uh, newer activity up north. This is very common in this area, but look at New Zealand down here. Uh, that could fill in in a big fashion soon. So be on guard. There's so much activity going on here around the area right now that uh, it makes sense here to put New Zealand uh, on some type of earthquake watch with everything going on. The general plate movement out here, if you look at, not uh, not that one. I'm looking, where's my, uh, don't know what happened to it there. It was up here. Uh, but the general plate movement in this area, uh, got, it has the Pacific plate here, the massive plate, the Pacific plate. Moving off to the north, northwest here. <clears throat> And interacting with this whole area back over here, right? The Filipino Trench or Filipino uh, Plate um, and the Australia Plate kind of crunching in there as well. Got, uh, man, there's a, just a lot of movement taking place out here in a short amount of time period. So watch New Zealand here pretty closely. <clears throat> I wasn't quite ready for this update, but I've seen that 6.6 .6 come in. And I figured I'd jump on here real quick and uh, chat about what's going on. Got, uh, man, just so much activity out here. 
So let's see what we have so far today with the largest magnitude. That's going to be that 6.2, then a 5.7. Just a short time earlier, it looks like, a few minutes earlier, uh, 5.7 around the Java Trench. A couple hours later, 5.7 around Papua New Guinea. Uh, and then we got that uh, Vanuatu area earthquake. Uh, look at this. Oh, this is just crazy. Literally a couple seconds after the Australia earthquake, we got a 5.7 in Vanuatu. So that tells me right here that things are quite strained around New Zealand area. Seeing that intraplate earthquake out there and then some subsequent movement up north. So pressure is quite great out here across this area of the plate boundary. And of course that includes New Zealand. It, they've been dealing with... Uh, a lot of deeper activity out here recently and a lot of smaller quake activity around the Alpine Fault there, which is capable of a, a, you know, a mega quake out there. Same with the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone that sits offshore of the North Island area. That's capable of producing a mega quake as well. Got, uh, you know, a lot of time has passed between the Alpine Fault last rupture and also the Hikarangi subduction zone. So this would, it would make sense to watch this area closely. There's a 4.9 this morning as well. So, man, just some crazy activity happening out here. Um, let's see. Some of those. Oh, there's a P wave, it looks like, potentially from, oh, I don't know. It could be that 5.7 showing up on the Japan station. That's way up north. Uh, so we got to watch this general area. There's a lot of pressure transferring out here in this region. We could see any of these areas show some larger movement. You know, New Zealand area. Uh, also, you know, when you move around one piece of the puzzle here, it can affect in many different areas. Keep an eye there on the Nankai Trough. That's this major subduction zone here. That is, uh, I've been talking about it a lot. Japan, the government there put a mega quake warning on it last year because of all the activity around it and the amount of time that has passed. And that uh, we did not get a full rupture last um you know, last event there, which was back in 1944. Uh, we only had um, uh, four segments here rupture, leading this one over here to uh, accumulate further stress and strain without any type of rupture. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Wait, man, it's got, I have a feeling we're going to see something bigger uh, striking out here today. It's too much noticeable, mo noticeable movement uh, to ignore it. I mean, that's multiple upper fives. Woo! Filling in. We are filling in out here. Let's take a look here at the West Coast real quick. Uh, most of the time when things are very active out here across the Western Pacific, things are a little bit quieter out across the Eastern Pacific. Uh, taking a look at the 2.5 map and above. Uh, let's go over here to the newest magnitude. A couple after midnight of 2.5. Uh, one off the Parkfield segment. Well, this is going to be very close to the Parkfield section of the San Andreas Fault west side of the San Joaquin Valley for a 2.5, uh, 2.7 a little bit further down south here as well near the Brawley Seismic Zone, very close to the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. There's a little bit of swarming going on here in kind of an odd fashion. That's uh, Normally we'll see this, uh, this swarming fashion work north to south here on the plate boundary, right? That's a general direction of the, uh, or northwest to southeast, you know, general north to south. Um, follow a trail of activity on these zones that, you know, tend to work in that fashion. But this one's going against it west to east here. So that's a little odd. Uh, things are definitely strained out here in Southern California as well. Uh, a little earthquake coming in off the San Andreas Fault here in the last hour. Uh, so we'll definitely watch Southern California as well. I'm not seeing any major uptick, you know, far as noticeable uptick right now. But keep an eye there on Southern California. Things have been in the last few weeks and last year as well. A lot of four-pointers out here all around the San Andreas Fault in various areas. Uh, you know, there's the strain is out there. Trust me, the strain is on the San Andreas Fault. And that could pop at any given second. A little bit of movement up around Long Valley Super Volcano, but really nothing big. Uh, Northern California, pretty quiet up there. Not a whole lot going on. Same for Washington and Oregon, aside from a couple smaller earthquakes up there. In the Cascades, 
around the oil fields of Texas and Oklahoma still getting hit. Uh, nothing new to report across the New Madrid seismic zone. One odd earthquake up there in Ohio, a 3.1 near Pleasant City, Ohio. Very shallow earthquake, so I guarantee you that was felt uh, if you were awake. Looks like a few reports around the Cambridge area. And, um, yeah, a little bit of odd shaking going on up there. They uh, occasionally do get some earthquake activity out here uh, every once in a while. And it's been a little while. So last 30 days of activity in this area, not a whole lot. Most of it's around the New Madrid seismic zone, the interplate uh, fault system, failed rift system, I should say, throughout many, 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 many years ago. Uh, but, uh, yeah, not a whole lot in this area. It does sit somewhat outside of that zone, right? It's really not in an active area. Um, so, so when I say it's odd, it's definitely odd, but uh, not completely unheard of. Let me see what we got for the satellite view out there. I don't know if there's any gas and oil wells out there or not. Looks like it's out there in the uh, heavily forested areas it looks like outside of somebody's farm so i'm sure they felt that i don't see anything of any interest so far as like any gas or oil fields out there so keep an eye here on today we got uh, way too much movement plus kilauea volcano this morning even uh erupted so let's go check this out this was yesterday's update right this is probably going to show a big difference notice the inflation chart here, vertical tilt meter at the summit area, was going up much higher than what we had seen in the previous episodes. I guarantee you that looks different now. Um, yeah, big time. There's the eruption. That uh, that finally came right here. You can see it on the uh, monthly chart as well. Although, uh, you know, I heard we had some fountaining up around six, seven hundred feet from the vents there at Kilauea Volcano. So that's going down. I'm guessing the eruption is still in process. Let's take a look here at the summit area of Kilauea Volcano. Oh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful, spectacular fountain going on there. That's much bigger than it looks, let me tell you. Um, it looks like just a small little six-foot eruption. No, those are hundreds of feet way up in the air fountain going on with uh, sufficient uh, lava flow as well. This, you know, this built up for... A number of days longer than the past couple, you know, buildups. So uh, this could continue for a little bit here throughout the uh, the Tuesday time period. But uh, that's definitely some spectacular fountain going on. Look at that view; absolutely stunning. I still want to get out there and see that. That's something I've never done. I've never been to Hawaii. So I just haven't. Uh, I don't know. But I would love to be out there for these uh, for this type of uh, event. And as of late, you know, it's almost predictable forecast. You know, you can you can look at this deformation chart here, except for this last one that was fairly lengthy, and uh, you know, pretty much pick a time period there when the next eruption will take place. It's been uh, very predictable, except for this last one which lasted from about the 8th all the way to uh, today's date. That's a long time. So we'll continue to watch that. Keep an eye on it. That will be some beautiful fountaining for a little while. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at space weather activity, see if anything else is going on. Uh, that G2 storm never materialized. Uh, the high-speed solar wind stream amped up a little bit last night, but as uh, far as the KP index there, Really never seen anything um, in the G2 class storm or the G1 class storm. So that was just a uh, pretty much a dud. There may have been some auroras at the typical extreme higher latitudes, but G2 never uh, materialized there. No major solar flares right now. Looks like maybe a M flare this morning. Decent long duration M flare. Let's see where that came from. Was Kevin talking about it? Uh, no, that was from... That's from yesterday. Um, and of course, it's not mentioned there on the noteworthy solar flares. I'm guessing it may have been this active area back over here on the western limb. 
Uh, this region looks like it's starting to get a little bit of complexity there. That's going to be 4064, much closer there to the center disk. Not really, though. Got a little bit of development back over here, so I may be going through some redeveloping phase. But uh, a little stage going on there, different type of structure over here. Um, but wow, I'm kind of curious. I want to see here real quick where that M flare came from. Let's put this in the motion here. And of course, a flare will be nice and bright. Right there. This sparked up a little bit. No, it was that side over here. There was a small sea flare from this area, but if you back, if you look over here across the western limb, notice this, this huge, bright, long-duration solar flare. Watch it. Right there. So I was right. Um, the other sea flare activity taking place from a couple of these center ones, uh, maybe this area back here. There's a little bit of close proximity there this one maybe but yeah that very active area is now off on the western limb go figure right the the sunspots have be, been behaving awfully odd as soon as they're facing the earth they they calm down and then once they get out of view they start stirring up solar flares what's going on here so look at the far side watch and see what we got going on here this is put out from three days ago what's going on so really no use it was put out from three days ago I don't know what's going on there some this is a uh, recent hard to tell though the western limb eastern limb um, all right let's take a look here at the storm prediction center real quick see if there's any major severe weather got a slight risk for some severe weather across Texas Oklahoma and Kansas area a little small two percent chance for some tornado activity. And of course, Reed Timmer is out there heading to that zone today. He'll pretty much chase anything out there. Out in Waco. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say Waco, but Waco's over here. Pecos, Texas. Out in the desert out there where all the oil fields are. Got uh, that little 2% chance there. That includes Lubbock and Midland. Uh, some wind and uh, some hail threat out there as well. So we'll keep an eye on things here today, folks. If I had to, um, you know, look at a major area above all else, I would definitely, definitely be watching the New Zealand area here. Uh, but technically, with this type of movement, anywhere Tonga southward along that plate boundary, it just seems like the strain is quite high out here right now. So we'll watch that. But literally, when we have all this activity all over the place, things can happen anywhere, folks. It's just a lot going on right now uh, with these large earthquakes striking up. I mean, that's a considerable amount of earthquake activity. We'll continue to watch this, folks, and uh, re report back on anything here. Uh, if it does take place out here, I normally try to jump on whenever there's something above 6.0 and above. Uh, watch for some larger movement out here today. I have a feeling I'll be back out here soon. Uh, enjoy your Tuesday. I'll see you guys back out here a little bit later.